happy feast day to the guys, uh, all the angels. Uh, it's a great feast in heaven. I'm sure they're throwing a big party. Mm -hmm. If you didn't get an invitation, then you're not close to the angels. Uh, if you got it, and you know it's it's you know this is the highest angels. You know there are nine groups of angels that we know of, um, and uh, seven archangels are close to it, uh, as we know of. But if you know that archangels, it's only the second step after the angels. So there are above angels. <laughs> there are so many other groups that. Uh, we thought uh, angels are, but even archangel has a power to move. Um, it was so funny that it, this this happened. <coughs> I was telling him that just now because I was <coughs> I was in the morning dawn mass with the Knights of Columbus in the Soul's Rest, and uh, they took me to the breakfast. And I saw this woman, and uh, I knew she was pregnant. And I said, "I'm I'm blessing your child." And I put my hands on her, and she said, "But pray, Father, please pray. <sighs> Baby can turn, flip. That's what she said." <laughs> So I, I was thinking the same thing when I was reading this. How, how did she know? You know, like I was thinking, how did I know that? You know, but just kind of some. Sometimes God works through mysterious ways, isn't it? Like you know, here He says, Jesus is saying, uh, "How do you know me?" You know, there is a connection that Jesus and Nathaniel that Nathaniel didn't know. You know, this is something I don't know if you know that there is a connection with God to every single human being. When as a priest, I see it a lot because sometimes I don't know the person. I tell something and I say, how do you know? I'm like, I don't know. I just told you now. <laughs> you know, it's kind of weird sometimes. You, you say something and all of a sudden they think that they, that's, that's something they've been praying to the Lord for a long time. Mm -hmm. You know, as a priest, I'm just an instrument of talking to them. But it just came by my thought. Nobody told me anything. I thought I said it, but it becomes God's thought. Mm -hmm. You know, many times that's what happened. People say, I remember there was a lady, she said um, um, because my phone, my iPhone, you know, there is problem. You know, sometimes it's a touch screen, so I leave it down there. Like, I don't want to touch it because it's start doing all all kind of stuff. So I left always in my car, and all of a sudden the phone is ringing. You know, and I said I didn't even touch it. I said you know the Siri or something. No, no, it's just just a random number. So I'm trying to turn that phone off. It doesn't turn off. You know, so that's kind of weird, you know. All of a sudden the phone rings and start to turn off, doesn't turn it off. <laughs> and this calls and uh, there's a lady, her name is Sue. She answered, you know, she works with me on the 50th anniversary of uh, St. Gerard in Patterson, New Jersey. So I met her there a very, very few uh, weeks or months I worked with her. So I kind of knew her, but the number was still it's dialing. So I, I knew the lady, so she picked up and she said, oh, thank you, Father, answering. I was just praying, and I was like, what do you mean you pray? Yeah, I was just praying to God that, you know, I just sent my sister to the surgery room. Okay, she just sent her sister to the surgery room, and she was praying, and you called me. And I was like, I didn't call you. <laughs> my phone was ringing. <laughs> I mean, it's a weird experience in my life. I still can't explain how did that happen. But I know who worked through it. There's somebody, some we call angels, who are the dial that phone because there is no way that phone is going to ring the random number. I mean, I might have a 2,000, 3,000 contacts in that. Okay, to dial that person at that time, an exact moment she prayed, that's kind of weird to me. Still, I, I still don't know the mystery. If you find out, let me know any kind of coincidence. But for me, I believe it's God's way of saying to her, you know, I heard your prayer. You know, so I, I just want to know that this is... This, the angels are reality even today. Mm -hmm. You know, if you see a, something good happen to you, angels work there. Okay, because we know the story of Tobit. The angel Raphael, Archangel Raphael, take the home human form to make good things happen, to remove the evil from a marriage, marital relationship. All right, and I ask, you know, I ask, today we need Archangel Raphael in every marriage. Every marriage. I'm sure that the people who are counseling in session, they know these things. How many problems are there in marriage? How many problems? They don't even know. They might be all looking smile, all looking good outside. But remember, the poison of evil and the devil is inside the fruit. Right? Jesus says, do not defile your marriage bed. The Hebrew 13, 4, I think that's what it is. But it's just to see that it's powerful. Because why? Because we need to pray to Archangel Raphael. Archangel Raphael, because we need marriage. One of the reasons, because why we have 18% of 
the real function of families now, father, mother, and children. 18% in the United States. 24% goes to the Catholic Church. 24% is. Why? Because we are struggling in our family. And husband and wives are struggling. And we need to remove this evil through the help of Archangel Raphael. We need it. We know how, why the divorce rate, divorce rate is high. Because there is evil that has <coughs> been you know, persecuting the ma married people, still persecuting today. And that is why we need the help of Archangel Raphael. Mm -hmm. Same thing with St. Michael. And I was just telling the story. You know, Bishop was introducing a letter last week. You, I'm sure you all heard it. Why a bishop invoke a letter to the diocese? Everywhere, every page read the same letter last weekend. Why? He smells the danger in the state of Vermont. He smells the danger. Why? Because a state is a territory is being enforcing a law that is not a law. St. Thomas Aquinas says, if Law is not rooted in natural law. It is not law at all. A law that is not rooted in natural law, that is not law at all. So you know why, what he's trying to do. Now what happens, why Bishop is doing this? Because he sees a territorial spirit. Where do you see it? Book of Daniel 10. He started to fast for 21 days. We know this called Daniel fasting later. 21 days he was fasting. Nothing happened. And at the end of his fasting, who comes up? Saint Gabriel show up. Ta-da! He says, the moment you humble yourself, on that first day, I left from heaven to give you the message. The first day! Wait, did he miss his boat or did he miss his first? Did he miss his flight? I mean, this is 21 days, buddy. Where, where were you? I mean, where were you, buddy? I'm just asking, I mean, 21 days to come from heaven to here. I mean, did he miss any transportation or, he, you know, flight right as well? I mean, I just don't know what flight he took it to come here when this guy was fasting for 21 days. You know what he says? He says that he was fighting with the territorial spirit of Persia. There is a territorial spirit here in Verman, and who knows it? Bishop knew. Bishop knew. Bishop Coyne knew. That's why he said, Address all the letters. You know, you know, I just put this very clearly. I, said, I could see through. He could see it. Because the law is coming against the good. The truth is preached into the myth. It's all scriptural here. The bishop is addressing an issue. Stating that we need to pray to who? Who came to help? When St. Gabriel said, hey, I need help, guys. I mean, I can't deliver the message. I need help. I'm trying to go to the message. I'm going to deliver the message. I can't. Why? Somebody's fighting me. The messenger. I'm just the messenger. Let me, let me go through. Because of the fasting and prayer Daniel was doing, who came to help? St. Michael. Chief Prince of this age. Chief Prince of this age. St. Michael the Archangel. And this is a beautiful story. That's why I say I wanted to make sure that you know that why we prayed to St. Michael. Okay, why we at the end of the day? Because this is a connection. I'm telling you, this is direct connection to St. Michael. We need to invoke St. Michael to fight the devil because no one can fight the devil. If you look at the story in the Tobit, you know, when when the, the this this Aste, what is the name of that? Astemus, Astemus, the, the devil, the wicked demon. Of lust. Okay? He's the chief prince of seven princes of hell. When he flee, when he sees the smell of the adoration, I don't know if you know that the, the smell of the fish is called the worship, adoration of the Holy Eucharist. When he smells that, it's a direct connection to today's new new testament. When he smells it, he runs. He cannot, he that's why the power of the adoration. When you smell, smoke that incense, the holy smoke, not this smoke, holy smoke. That smoke repels the demon and it flees to the upper part of Egypt. See, it leaves the territory. When a, a demon or evil leaves the territory, it loses its power. And that's why who goes after the after the devil? A 
final archangel. Nor Tobi, Tobias or Tobi or any prophets. We don't have a power to bind. He bind his feet and the hands. And our angels has given, the angels has given the power. Because they are also fallen angels. Only angel can bind the fallen angels. It's chosen in the Holy Scripture. And that is why we need, we need archangels. We need the angels help. You know, October 2nd is also another feast of guardian, guardian angels. angels. So we need to pray. Pray with the angels. And territory today we need as Vermont. That's why I said, I want you to pray. If you get time, pray St. Michael prayer. Mm -hmm. And we need to see the miracle. And God will. This young lady, I didn't know you. I, didn't, I mean, you know, she was surprised. She asked me, you know, she said, can you, can you pray? And I was like, yes. What? To flip the baby. That's easy. Not me for God, isn't it? <laughs> so I was just coming through and I said, in the holy name of Jesus, flip that baby, I said. <laughs> On the car, I said, you know. If you truly believe it's going to happen, flipping the baby, it's easy for God. Mm -hmm. For us, it's a very difficult task, isn't it? But look, the small prayer, the small conversation. Because why? She felt the shame that the priest, because why? She saw probably an angel in me, probably, that's what it is. Just like they saw, he saw Son of God and King of Israel in Jesus Christ. Son of God is not used by Jewish in the, in the Old Testament. Because they never believed, if you notice it, they never believed in the Son of God the Father. He, but Nathaniel says, you are the Son of God. Shows there is a connection is made in his, in his heart. I told you that God teaches in the heart. Holy Spirit teaches in your spirit. But as I say, the teach me, Lord. Because every day is a teaching. If you see that I don't have anything to learn today, that means you're not listening. Because Holy Spirit always teach. Every word is a teaching for the Holy Spirit. But only if we can listen with our ears or the heart. And that is what we need to open. Let us ask today, in a special way, open our heart. So we can listen and learn from the Holy Spirit. Our true and only teaching. Amen. Amen. Amen.